What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a pretty neat ultra small form factor Windows 11 PC from Melee known as the Quieter 3C. And about four months ago on the channel as making this video, we took a look at a very similar PC from the same company known as the Quieter 3Q. And with that, it actually performed really well for its form factor. It does 4K video playback pretty good. But with the Q model, it was lacking one main feature that I love to see on these super small form factor PCs, and that's alt mode over USB type C. I refer to it as single cable operation mode. And with the new C model here, we've got it built in. So basically, if your monitor or your TV supports USB Type-C video signal and PD power out, all you need is a single cable for this to work. And one of the best things here is it's a very low power consumption PC. This runs on 12 volts and it doesn't pull over 15 watts at full load. But before we move any further, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84. But if you use code ETA at checkout, you can get 25% off. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. And inside of the box, you're going to get a power supply. It's a USB Type-C power supply, 12 volts, 2 amps. And another cool thing about this is it does support an extra NVMe drive. Easy to install, there's four screws on the bottom, the plate comes off, and we can put a new drive right in here, up to one terabyte. It's a passively cooled PC, so it's totally silent, we don't have any moving parts in here, hence the name, Quieter. But unfortunately, with a PC like this, we can't upgrade the CPU, we can't upgrade the RAM. The only thing we can add here is an extra NVMe SSD, right here in this M.2 slot. Even the Wi-Fi module is soldered, but it does support Wi-Fi 6. And just to give you an idea of the size here, I wanted to do a comparison between an Xbox One controller. I mean, as you can see, this thing is absolutely tiny. Up front, we've got a single power button. Over here on the right-hand side, we've got three USB 3.1 ports. These are full size. And around back, we have gigabit ethernet, full size HDMI. We've also got a mini display port out and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And as you can see, we've got two USB Type-C ports. One of these only supports power in, but the other one over here on the far left supports alt mode. So we can do video out and power in at the same time, or you could use it as a regular old USB type C port for data transfer. And right above the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, we've got a micro SD card slot. And when it comes to the specs for the CPU, we've got an Intel Celeron N5105, four cores, no extra threads with a burst up to 2.9 gigahertz, built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units, eight gigabytes of DDR4 running at 2,933 megahertz. You can pick this up with either 128 or 512 gigabytes of internal storage. But remember, we've got that M.2 slot up to one terabyte. It's got built-in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2. This newer model does have a fully unlocked BIOS, and you can set this up to auto power on. And right out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Home. All right, so the monitor I have here is a 4K BenQ monitor. We do have USB Type-C video in. It also supports up to 65 watt PD quick charging through this port. We won't get anywhere close to 65 watts because this doesn't even pull over 15, but it's single cable, power it on, and it's going to start to boot up. We're sending power in and video out through that single USB Type-C cable. And there it is. And yes, it does support 4K 60 out of that USB Type-C. I've been up and running for a little while now. I've got some applications and games installed that we're going to be testing out. But one thing that I wish they would have changed from the original model was the RAM configuration. We're still only running in single channel, which is going to hurt that GPU performance. But, you know, in the long run, we're not working with that much power in the first place. 
This is far from a high performance mini PC. We're working with a lower end chip here, but it actually does a pretty good job with web browsing, email checking, document editing, 4K video playback. You want to get some light indie gaming out of the way. It's actually really decent at those tasks. And for web browsing here, I'm on Wi-Fi. Personally, I do like using Ethernet, but since we've got Wi-Fi 6 built in, I figured we'd just go wireless with it. And yeah, I do think that this will make a great little secondary PC for some people, as long as you don't go into this thing thinking that you're going to run AAA games at 60 FPS or have 50 Photoshop windows open at the same time. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback from YouTube. This is a demo video I always like to test. 4K 60 HDR. One thing I can say about these lower end Intel chips is before you even start the video, let it buffer out for just a second. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of drop frames on the initial startup. But with the way this is set up right now, we've only got 10 drop frames so far. And throughout the video, that's all we're going to get. So it really does a great job at 4K video playback if you want to stream it or native playback from an external drive or internal. Now it's time to take a look at some light gaming because, uh, you know, when it comes down to it, we've got that low end chip and this is really what it's going to handle. Lower end stuff, indie games, older titles. And right now we've got the Windows Store version of Minecraft at 12 chunks running at 60. I mean, it definitely handles Minecraft really well. Next on the list, one of my favorite indie games right now, The Art of Rally. We're at low settings, 720p, and we do get dips under 60. Now I've tested this chip before with dual channel RAM, and it will run this at a constant 60, but we're only working with single channel RAM here, and that's one thing I really wish they would have upgraded in this. It definitely helps out a lot. Another one I tested here was San Andreas, where at high settings, 720p with widescreen on, it will run it over 60. And the last native PC game we're going to test here is Dead Cells, another indie game. I was actually surprised to see that this is running at over 100 FPS. I know it's a 2D side scroller, but I've actually had this game struggle on some of these lower end x86 chips in the past. So yeah, you can definitely get some gaming out of the way on this thing. It's going to be indie titles and older PC games, but they do work quite well. But I gotta say, on these smaller PCs, one of my favorite things to do is cloud gaming, be it xCloud, Stadia, GeForce Now. And I always go wired with it because I'll get the best performance that way, so I do have Ethernet plugged in. And the one I wanted to test here was one I've been using quite a bit lately, which is PlayStation Plus for PC. So what this is going to allow us to do is stream from Sony's servers. This isn't remote play or anything like that. I'm not streaming from my own PS5 or PS4 in the house. This is PlayStation Cloud Gaming, and it's actually been getting really good over the past few months. So right into a little bit of gameplay, we've got Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is streaming from Sony servers. This does use hardware acceleration. It's actually using OpenGL, and hopefully in the future they can implement Vulkan because I think we'd get better performance that way. But I can minimize this at any time, and I'll just show you that we are on this PC here. If you've got a subscription to PlayStation Plus or a higher-end subscription, I would highly recommend checking this out. It actually works very, very well. The last thing I really wanted to test here was powering this by a battery pack. So I've got a little phone charger here. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. I've also got a portable monitor, which does support USB Type-C video in. And I've got the battery pack power in the mini PC. And in turn, all I need is that single cable going over to the monitor itself. It's going to send enough power and video signal over there. So yeah, this does work on battery power. And of course, I would recommend just buying a laptop if you want to do something like this. But, you know, if you've got one of these mini PCs or plan on buying one, just note that, yeah, you can power it from a battery. I always like to take a look at total system power consumption when it comes to these tiny PCs, and this thing is definitely low power. At idle, it only pulls 4 watts. Average gaming, it jumped up to 12. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out the GPU and the CPU at the same time was 14 watts from the wall. The C version here does have an unlocked BIOS, and you can up the TDP, but it's not going to help out at all because we're already sending enough power to that CPU and GPU at 14 watts to keep those clocks up, so you're not going to see a significant gain in performance while up in that TDP. You're only going to see a little more heat, 
And speaking of temps here, idle, 48 degrees Celsius. Average gaming with the games that I tested in this video, which aren't super high-end games, was 70 degrees Celsius. And I was able to make this thing thermal throttle by maxing it out for about six minutes straight on the GPU and the CPU. And I kind of expected that to happen, running this thing at 14 watts. We don't have any external cooling. It's all passively cooled from the interior. But overall, I think it's a great little performer if you need a supplemental PC. Keep in mind, it's not a high-end gaming machine. It's not going to be great for video editing or even photo editing. Now, you could get some photo editing done on it, but this wouldn't be my first choice for anything like that. Web browsing, email checking, 4K video playback, indie gaming, you'll be good to go. So if you're interested in learning more about the Mili Quieter 3C, I'll leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see tested on this, like a different operating system, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.